back. So the 2021 election is now in the books. One thing is certain, Seattle will have a new mayor. Current Mayor Jenny Durkin announced months ago that she would not run again, but she didn't really explain why until now. Joyce Taylor is here to discuss her eye-opening interview with Mayor Durkin. Thank you for being with us. I'm really happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Of course. I mean, you are one of the few people who got a chance to sit down with the mayor and talk about what happened in a year that was like no other. It really is a term that is like no other, if you think about it. Right. The pandemic, the worst that we've seen since the Spanish flu. Right. And then a racial reckoning and on and on, right? And yeah. so really it's a term that was like no the other. Whole, I guess true. It was a whole term, even though so much happened in 2020. Mm -hmm. And a lot happened to the mayor, right? That's right. And she really has not talked to anyone in depth mm -hmm. until now. And it was a couple months ago that she and I were talking about something completely different. And this came up as almost a sidebar during our conversation, the threats that she has been experiencing. They started in the summer of 2020, but they have been relentless. Re even relentless. now. I'm not talking about a couple dozen threats, not even a couple hundred threats. We're talking thousands of threats. And yes, even now they persist. Threats to her life. Death threats, at least a dozen, have risen to the level where they are being looked into by the Seattle Police Department and the FBI. And the FBI. Death threats not just against her, but mm -hmm. against her partner and against her children. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. yeah. Not against my kids, no. Right? I can understand then right. why, maybe, uh, why maybe she's decided not to run for re-election. Did she talk about that? Did she share with you why? So when she announced that she was not going to run, and this was after she'd already filed the paperwork to run for another term, mm -hmm. at the time she said that she really felt it was the best thing for the city, that she'd become such a polarizing figure, right. that it was time for the city to turn the page. And she did not at that time acknowledge that she had been enduring all of these threats. Fast forward to now, and when we sat down and really peeled it back, she said she could not divorce this issue yeah. from her decision to not run again. So yes, I would say yes, this is part of her decision to not run again. It is not the entire right. decision, but it was definitely part of her decision. How did all this happen? I mean, if, is there someone we can point the blame to? I mean, th threats of, of death against yeah. a public figure, it's, it's extreme. Can you point the blame to a single person? I would say probably not, but can you point it to a, a moment in time? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. The summer of 2020 in June, um, you'll remember we had protests in Seattle after the tragic police killing of George Floyd. Mm -hmm. Those protests ended up on Capitol Hill and we had the CHOP, the Occupied Zone, the CHAZ, um, yep. various terms. And at that time, the President of the United States decided to declare Seattle an anarchist jurisdiction and threatened to bring in the National Guard. and. Mayor Durkin tweeted and the president tweeted. She responded to his tweets. He mm -hmm. tweeted, you might recall, take back your city now. If you don't do it, I will. I do you remember that? She responded, take care of us. Go back to your bunker, telling the president to go back to his bunker. That was the beginning of tweets that you could mark in that moment an escalation of threats against her. Okay. Then add to that, city council member Shama Sawant leading a march to Mayor Durkin's home with 1,500 people. And you had mentioned before, Mayor Durkin was a former federal prosecutor. That's right. Put a lot of bad guys away. That's why her That's address right. wasn't necessarily public until That's right. Council Member Sawant. So she was the U.S. Attorney for the Western District, mm -hmm. 2009 to 2014. She put some really bad people behind bars. We're talking members of the cartel and organized crime mm -hmm. and got special permission after she was no longer prosecutor to have her address protected. And right. she believes that uh, city council member Shama Sawant, by bringing people to her home, really escalated the threats against her mm -hmm. and, that, and that she knew what she was doing when she brought those people to her home. Yes. And what did they leave behind? Vile, misogynistic, homophobic um, graffiti yeah. spray painted at her doorstep. Right. And an escalation of threats that have persisted ever since. Looking back on that year, was there anything, did the mayor give any indication that she'd wished she'd done things differently during the summer of 2020? 
Well, she didn't say she had any regrets. She looks back at that period of time. You'll remember protesters were repeatedly tear gassed. Mm -hmm. um, that's now something that's a, a legal matter. Uh, the way that the entire situation was handled with former police chief Carmen Best, yep. uh, that's a situation I think she looks at and wonders if that could have been handled differently. Right. Uh, she thinks that Carmen Best was completely disrespected by the city council yeah. in not uh, wanting to dialogue with her about these ideas of defunding the police department. Uh, but she did not say she had any regrets. Do you, and we know we're about out of time, but why did she decide that now was the time to talk about this? She, not because she wants sympathy or wants people mm -hmm. to have any pity on her, because she thinks if we allow this kind of extremism and dialogue and attacks against city officials, public servants, good right. people won't serve. Good people won't want to serve. They don't sign up for this. Yeah. They're public servants. And, and remember, 2020, she gave back her salary. She was working for free. She wasn't getting paid. Right. And she's been enduring these kinds of threats. So the bottom line, I think, for her is it's not right if city officials, public officials, leaderships, regardless of what side of the aisle they're on, don't denounce it. It gives people permission. And good people won't serve. And that is bad for democracy. That's the truth. Uh, really quickly, when can people watch this, watch your special interview? 6.30 and 11 o'clock tonight. Perfect. Thank you.